In this video, we will observe the dark skies of Oregon at Pine Mountain Observatory. We will learn about the observatory and some of the space objects that we can see from it. All images in the video were shot from Pine Mountain. The telescope images were provided by Pine Mountain Observatory and University of Oregon. When looking for a good place to stargaze, you want to be far away from cities. Most of the best dark sky viewing in Oregon is in the southeast. The journey begins at the nearby city of Bend in Central Oregon. If you look southeast about 20 miles, you will see Pine Mountain. The mountain sits at about 6,500 feet elevation and has a few different peaks. Pine Mountain is in the Deschutes National Forest. At the top of Pine Mountain is an observatory with four different telescopes. The observatory is ran by the University of Oregon Physics Department. Advanced astronomical research takes place here, as well as education to the general public. The observatory is open to the public on weekend nights from late May to September. The first of my two trips to Pine Mountain was in the spring before the observatory had opened. For a little history, Pine Mountain Observatory was created in 1967 thanks to professors Russ Donnelly and E.G. Ebenhausen. They originally tried to start the observatory in the Cascades near Sisters. Unstable weather from the mountains caused them to move the observatory to Pine Mountain. Being away from the Cascades and high above the surrounding flat desert makes for a very good clear sky viewing area. The four different dome telescopes are 14, 15, 24, and 32 inches. Like most, these are reflector telescopes which use mirrors to gather light from the sky. The mirrors are curved to gather all rays of light into a single point that you can see in the viewfinder. The largest building houses the powerful 24-inch telescope. This was the first telescope installed at Pine Mountain. On the other side is the 32-inch telescope, which is currently decommissioned. Eventually, they hope to replace it with a newer and larger telescope. Behind it is the small but mighty Robbins Telescope. This 14-inch telescope is the smallest but also the newest and most advanced. The Robbins has new high-quality optics and a research-grade camera system. The telescope can be operated remotely from the University of Oregon. There's a trail that goes from the observatory to the top of a hill. It was nice to have the dog along for this trip. They are not allowed when the observatory is open. At the top are two rock shelters. The open area is very windy, so these can provide some cover for stargazers and smaller telescopes. This is the highest point near the observatory, but not the actual summit of Pine Mountain. While we were up on the hill, a storm rolled in. 
Fortunately, the forecast showed a quick storm before the stars would show up. Pine Mountain has a campground and primitive camping available on forest roads. We watched the sunset from camp and waited for the stars to show up. The best time to go stargazing is during or near a new moon. New moons occur when the moon is between the earth and the sun, causing the moon's light to face away from us. This gives us the darkest sky so we can see further into space. Once it became dark enough, it was time to head back to the observatory. With telescope operations closed, I was the only person at the observatory. Usually on good dark sky nights like this, there are tons of people here. While the telescopes were closed, this area is still a great dark sky viewing spot. The observatory domes provide a very interesting foreground subject for star photos. Looking northwest, you can see the city lights of Bend. Because of this light pollution, the best dark sky viewing is in the opposite direction to the east. When the observatory is open, only red lights are allowed to keep everything dark. Since I was the only one there, I could light up the dome structures for pictures. I spent some time experimenting with different framing and settings, so I would have a lot of options. One of the easiest to spot constellations is the Big Dipper. This can be used to help with navigation. If you make a line up from the two stars on the right, it will lead you to the North Star. In addition to public education, the university conducts research from the observatory. Right now, they are observing asteroids. As the asteroids spin, they show different levels of light. That information is used to create 3D models of the asteroids. Another visible constellation was Lyra. Easiest to find from its bright star called Vega, which is the fifth brightest star in the sky. I had a nice time enjoying the empty observatory. It was a peaceful night of stargazing on top of Pine Mountain.
We visited Pine Mountain another time to see the observatory in action. Paragliders were flying all over the mountain during the day. Pine Mountain is very popular for paragliding due to the flat surroundings. A couple years ago, a paraglider set the state flying record by going from here all the way to Alver Desert. Many mountains can be seen from the top of Pine Mountain on a clear day. Bachelor, the Three Sisters, Broken Top, Washington, Three Finger Jack, Black Butte, and Mount Jefferson. We set up another camp, enjoyed the sunset, and waited for the stars to show up. As soon as the stars came out, it was time to head to the observatory again. This time, the observatory was packed. It was a clear summer night with a new moon. The grounds were full of people, cameras, and telescopes. While the observatory is open, only red lights are allowed. This is so our eyes can stay adjusted to the night sky. The first telescope image is of the Trifid Nebula. A nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas. Some are formed by dying stars, while others are regions of new stars. You can look through a couple different telescopes around the observatory. There are guides that will explain and show different objects in the sky. One of the most visible planets is Jupiter. It gets more light than most planets, so it can be seen by the human eye. It has 79 known moons, a few of which you can see in this image. Lo, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. There were many options to view the sky, from large telescopes, smaller ones, cameras, and simply using your own eyes. The comet named Ison was captured at Pine Mountain in 2013. Shortly after, it traveled too close to the sun and disintegrated. The stars in the image look like they are moving due to the telescope tracking the comet. M55 is a globular cluster inside our galaxy. These are spherical collections of thousands of stars. This is part of the Milky Way galaxy, but its distance from Earth is over 17,000 light years. Inside the main observatory dome, you can get up close and look through the 24 inch telescope. The helpful guide will provide information and show points of interest. One point of interest is M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. This is a spiral galaxy much like ours. The blue color is younger stars, while the yellow color indicates older stars. Below it, you can see another galaxy slowly passing by. Enjoying great views of the stars can make time go by quickly. A few times I have lost track and ended up seeing the sunrise. The last shot is of our galaxy, the Milky Way, which is also a spiral galaxy. The human eye sees a hazy band of light because there are so many close together stars. 
Pine Mountain is a great place to visit and view the night sky. I hope you enjoyed this Oregon stargazing experience.